Lester Levinson was a great spiritual master. And one of the most important things that he said was, use every down as an up. Use every setback as an opportunity, because if you use it, it is an opportunity for you to make a massive leap forward in your life, if you would use it. But what does it mean? How do you use it as an opportunity to move forward, rather than be some sort of positive slogan that really gets you nowhere? That's what we're gonna take a look at today, how to turn adversities and setbacks in your life into your biggest gains. Coming up. Welcome to The Power of Quiet, the simple way to self-realization. So if you want total control of your mind and more happiness and abundance in your life, then you've come to the right place. So if you're new here, make sure to subscribe. You're gonna love what we show you, primarily because it is 100% experiential, meaning you have to believe me, but you could take it for checking, try what we show you and prove it to yourself. And if you're a regular here, you love the work that we do and it makes a big difference in your life, then let us know. Hit the like button below and share your gains, share your experiences in the comments below or any questions that you have. Drop those in the comments and I'll jump in whenever I can and answer those for you. Now, last month, we did a 12-day retreat in Romania called the Ultimate Truth Retreat. And it's called the Ultimate Truth Retreat because we are here to discover the truth of who we really are. And we're here to follow in the footsteps of all the great masters who have come before us, whether that's Lester Levinson, Jesus, Amma, the Hugging Saint, or even Gandhi. And you see, all of these masters, they all had the same message to share. And that message is unconditional love. And in many cases, these masters demonstrate what being unconditionally loving really means. See, to most of us, to our thinking mind, to our rational mind, because we try to intellectualize it and understand love, and the mind will never understand love. You see, to most of us, coming from the mind, what love is, is as long as you do what I want you to do, I love you. But as long as you don't do what I want you to do, then I'm upset and I hate you. I even want to kill you. That's where we're really coming from. And we call that loving. And so the reason why I mention this is because when we were in Romania talking about what would we need to do in order to be unconditionally loving. And the subject or the topic of the war in Ukraine came up. Well, how could I love a situation like that? And how could I love somebody like Putin and the Russians when they're doing such horrible things? And for one thing, being loving doesn't mean being stupid. It doesn't mean that you have to agree with some, what somebody's doing, but it's looking at yourself and your attitude and where you're coming from because if you hate what they're doing, what does that solve? The only solution coming from that point of view is they must be destroyed, they must be eradicated. And so you're countering hate with more hate. And as I say, two wrongs don't make a right. And nothing ever gets resolved. It's just like a never ending saga of karma that goes back and forth when we react to situations like this. And by the way, talking about Gandhi, he demonstrated the power of what it means to be unconditionally loving. He had the whole British empire against him, but his attitude was, I'm not gonna fight with the British, I'm not gonna hate them, I'm gonna tell my followers to do the same, we're gonna treat the British as they're our brothers. And look at what happened. The British Empire just handed over the keys to the country. They literally gave it away. They don't even know why. They don't even know what hit them. And so that's just a demonstration of the power 
that you step into when you decide to be loving unconditionally. And again, doesn't mean that you have to agree with the other one, but it's just an attitude of, I love you, I love you, I love you. And that reliance on love, that it's the most powerful force in the universe, and that is gonna be the solver of problems, not hatred, not war, not fighting back. And so, the thing is, is when I brought this up in Romania, there were some arguments that went along the lines of, look, you don't understand. You're way over there where you're safe. But this is happening right on our doorstep. You don't understand the situation and the hardship that we are facing right here in this place. We have it so hard. We have it so bad. You, you're privileged. You just wouldn't understand. And we've heard this sort of argument come up a lot in recent history, right? About people who are privileged and others who have hardships, have it so bad. And if we follow along that line of thinking, there is no solution. All we achieve is victimhood. But if we take on this position, I'm gonna love whatever's going on, whether it's a situation like a, a war that's on my doorstep, or a big setback that's in my life. We can examine our attitude towards it. Am I loving towards it? Or do I not like what's going on? And it's really simple. Because if I don't like what's going on, if I have a problem, if I have a situation in my life that's a challenge, that's a hardship, like an ordeal that I'm going through in life, I have a choice. I can moan about it, I can complain, and beat myself up, talk about how hard I have it, and how life is unfair. And what does that accomplish? Nothing. Or I could decide, you know what, I'm gonna get positive, I'm gonna love what's going on. What's going on in the world, or what's going on in my life. Because <laughs> for no other reason, what does it hurt to be loving? I mean, why not? And it is just a choice, right? So now it's this sort of logic that comes from simple discrimination, just by see, looking at things clearly and plainly, like, to see what's going on. If I dislike what's going on, if I hate it, and I'm being negative, what does that solve other than me feeling bad about the situation versus if I decide to be positive and loving instead of sitting around in fear and anger and complaining to myself, I'm just going to release. I'm going to let go. I'm going to move up. I'm going to move up into a higher consciousness. And who's it up to? Is it up to them or is that up to me? Is it up to them or is it up to me to decide to be positive and loving or to decide to be negative and hateful and fearful and all that stuff? See, everything in life is a decision. And going back to that argument that I have it so bad and it's because of the challenges that are facing me that I cannot move forward. I cannot be all loving, or I cannot have all this abundance that Lester and all these other masters talk about, and on and on and on because, oh, I got it so bad, I have so many problems, and on and on and on. Now, the funny thing is, is at the retreat, when we had this conversation, that same day, that same evening, we watched a video of Lester where he addressed this exact issue I'm going to play a little clip of that right now so you can see where Lester's coming from and what his message is in regards to this. So when we run the gamut, we go out no more because I live in hell and that's the state we're in here. The most limited, the most hellish state beings can ever get themselves into.
because we're down here, we have a tremendous advantage. When you're in hell, the advantage is the incentive to get out of it. And we're played with it. Peppered, like with bullets all the time, to get out of this state. And because of that, from here, we can go straight all the way back home. When we so decide, my recommendation is bypass it all. Take this. Get off the roller coaster. Go right back home. Being in the state we're in, any one of us can do it. Remember, that's the tremendous advantage of being here in the physical. We can go straight back home. You can do it in a few months, a few years, this lifetime, or many, many lifetimes. It's up to you. You make the choice. Now, the majority of people on this earth who, don't, who do not have the Sedona method are going to take millions of years through the trial and error, through the hard way of smashing up everything to show us that it doesn't lie in things. I think you can see that as our trouble today. We have materiality. We were never so unhappy. Back in the days when I was a boy, a youth, Hardly anyone had enough food, if you can imagine that. We were doled out to things like fruit, desserts, they were expensive. Things like cars, TVs, radios, airplanes, boats. A very small percentage probably less than one percent of us had those things back in those days but to today everyone has more than what the wealthiest man had back then and we think material things will bring happiness and we still do we still go after them Discover where the happiness is. It's not in the thing. It's in letting go of the agony of not having it. Desire is an agony of lack. It's letting go of the desire for having it that momentarily quiets our minds. And at that moment, <clears throat> we're just being. So you see, this is a pretty powerful position that Les is putting forth here, that you can take what many would consider to be a down and turn it into an up, turn it into an opportunity to take a challenge, a setback in your life and not look at it and say, oh, what a problem this is, but actually be grateful for that and look at it as, wow, what an opportunity this is. And this isn't some sort of like rah, rah attitude, you know, a la Tony Robbins, that sort of a thing. Like what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. It's not like that, but it's something that when I show you how you can apply some of the skills and tools that we have here, that you can act upon this and really turn it into your advantage. And so I'm going to show you how to do that. I'm going to show you some simple steps that you could take to turn a setback into a huge gain, a huge win for you in your life. But first, I want to share with you my own experiences, or one of them at least, because throughout my over 20 years of practicing and teaching this method, 
I've had many times in my life when I've been confronted with huge challenges, major setbacks, and even been in a position where literally my back was against the wall and I didn't know what I was going to do or what my future would look like. And things were looking seriously, seriously bleak. So I've had many opportunities like this. I've had many burdens to carry. And so when somebody says, you don't understand <laughs> this burden that I have to carry, it reminds me of a line from the movie, The Legend of Bagger Vance, where Will Smith says, there's not a person on this planet who hasn't had to carry a burden that they don't understand, right? We all have burdens to carry. And so recently, I'm going to share one of my recent experiences and how I turned it into a huge win. Because as many of you know, the past four years, I've been learning and practicing to become a successful trader. We did a whole class on this about four years ago. And learning to trade is a big challenge, a huge challenge. And the act of trading, getting involved in the markets, it can trigger you in ways that run really, really deep. And this isn't just me personally, you know, experiencing this. Pretty much everybody that takes on this field of trading encounters this. This is why I think there's over a 90% failure rate where people just give up. They just bail out of it within a year because either they lose all their money or they just get so stirred up. It's so hard and it aggravates people so much that they just, I can't deal with this anymore. I don't want anything to do with this anymore. And so I, I experienced many moments like this, but there were times when it got so bad that I felt so low that I felt like I'm, I'm the world's biggest failure, that nothing is worth it anymore. I had real and serious thoughts about walking outside and finding a way to end myself, let's say. And here's the thing. What got stirred up wasn't anything that was new inside of me. Telling you this story reminds me of another story, an earlier story. Back when I was much, much younger, I used to have this perfect program that meant that if I'm doing something, I'm, if I'm taking on a hobby or a project or trying to accomplish something, that I wanted to be great at it. I wanted to do it perfectly. And the moment it wasn't turning out perfect, I flipped out. I just flew into a fit of rage. I'd have a huge temper tantrum and I'd usually smash whatever it was that I was working on. And this was a common occurrence. I did this throughout my childhood, like at least twice a week. I would scream and yell, I'd break things, and it wasn't until I got into releasing that a lot of this just melted away because I released a lot of pushing down on my feelings and it alleviated a lot of those urges that would just take me over. And so over the years of releasing, that just basically disappeared. And I thought I was free of it until I got involved with trading. Boy, then a deep part of that was that was still a seed of it deep inside of me showed up again and it showed up in a big way. It just really made me crazy. And I was confronted in that situation with the same thing that Lester talks about. Here I had this massive problem. I just feel horrible about it. I put myself in this position. I wish I'd never done this. Life is awful. And on and on and on. 
like I said, to the degree I, I really had this voice in my head telling me to go do something about it, if you know what I mean. And so listening to Lester and having listened to him enough, I knew that, okay, wait a minute, somewhere here I'm off track. Let me just pay attention to what Lester's been talking about. And I remember what Lester said. Use every down as an up. And here's what I decided. I decided that the most important thing for me now is imperturbability. Because that is the cornerstone of the whole method. That's where it all starts off. As many of you know, step one is I must want imperturbability more than I want anything else. And what does it mean to be imperturbable? I mean, it's a big word, but it simply means to be in the place, to be in the position where no one and nothing can bother you. And that's a powerful place to be in. So when I looked at that and that decision, okay, I want that more than I want to deal or fix this situation. Because here's the situation I'm in. I'm in a situation where I'm feeling out of control about what it is that I'm doing, about what's going on in my life. In this situation, I have no control over it. And, I'm, and prior to making the decision I wanted perturbability, it was a situation that's frustrated me. I didn't know what to do about it. And the answer was to try to figure it out, work harder at it, or give up doing something like that. And all of that was me trying to deal with the fact that I felt bothered. So if I could find the answer, if I can get to a place where, okay, now I know what to do, then I'll feel good. Or if I got control of the situation, then I would feel better. Or if the situation, you know, went away and I could have my answer another way, then I would feel better. But basically what I'm telling myself is once that situation changes, then I'll be happy. Then I'll feel good about myself. But that's the wrong attitude to take. When I instead take the attitude of, I want imperturbability more than anything else. More than I want to fix or change this situation. I want to be in the place where I'm not bothered by it at all. And that's a step that I could take. Because in that moment, when I feel like there's a limitation and I am limited by that limitation, it seems to be true. And I could try to, you know, give myself affirmations and positive talk myself out of it, but it won't change the fact that I am powerless in that moment over the situation. And as far as I know, I have no power over it. So as far as I know, I cannot control what's going on. But I do know that there is something that I can control. How I feel about it. Whether or not I'm bothered by it. That is something that is under my control. And therefore, I'm going to take that step right now. So rather than trying to change or fix the situation, try to figure it out and continue to be negative and, and on and on and on, I'm just going to take that step where I'm, my only mission, even if I never find any success there, if I can just get to the place where I let go of all my garbage, I let go of all my negativity, and I manage to be completely imperturbable, not bothered anymore by this thing that's bothered me a lot, would that be worth it? And of course, the answer is yes. Because again, to be in the place where a situation that isn't going your way, if it bothers you, that something isn't going your way, no matter how important it may seem to be, that's coming from a weak place, isn't it? Versus 
being in a place where you're imperturbable, no matter what's going on. And no one and nothing can bother you. That's a place of strength. And when you're in that place, you also find that that's a place of clarity. And you can take effective action. You can, you can make very effective decisions coming from a place where you're not bothered, where you're not reactive, you're not triggered. And so I decided that's what I'm going for. Now, like I said, a lot of us, we're familiar with step one. I must want imperturbability more than I want anything else. And a lot of us will recite that in our mind, almost like it's a mantra. But see, a lot of us, we say it, but we really don't get clear about it and really mean it. And this way of discriminating and confronting the stuff that's going on in your life and using it, that's how you actually do it. So, anyway, long story short, I let go of what was bothering me. And that led to some massive breakthroughs and really changed my whole picture from that moment forward. And like I said, what got stirred up in me wasn't anything new. It was something that I had dealt with my whole life that I thought that I'd gotten rid of. But when I was faced with this challenge, rather than treating it like, oh, oh, poor me who has to go through this challenge and poor me who's so bad that I can't get it right. Instead, looking at it as, oh, look at what a great opportunity this has brought me. Because it showed me that that toxic negativity that was inside of me my whole life that I thought I'd gotten rid of, that it's still here. And now it brought it up right in front of my face so that I could see it. And now I can let that go. Lock, stock, and barrel. Let it go for good now. And who knows? There might be some more there. But one thing that I know for sure is I let go of a massive chunk of that negativity. And I feel great. And this incident that I'm talking about, it happened more than a year ago now. And in this past year, my releasing and consciousness has just gone up and up and up. And I am supremely grateful for the challenge that brought up to me a huge chunk of negativity that I was sitting on that I could finally see and let go of. So, this is what Lester's talking about. How you can use every down as an up if you would use it. So let's apply this to something that you're confronting in your life, a challenge that you're facing. And I'll show you some simple steps on how to overcome it. It really is simple. So think about something that you're facing in your life right now. And first thing, when you think about this, just bring your attention to your stomach or chest. And just notice what you feel there. Just feel what you're feeling in this area, in your stomach or chest area. And when you're thinking about this situation or this challenge or this problem that you have, notice that there's a tightness, a clenching feeling in your stomach or chest. Feel anything like that? And what that is, is your body letting you know that there's a negative feeling there. And all these feelings they want to leave. That's why it's kind of pushing up. And you're feeling this pressure because it's pushing up, but you're also pushing down on it because you're like, I don't want this negativity. I don't want to deal with this right now. Make it go away. But when we push down on it, we're not making it go away. We're actually holding on to it. We're pushing it down inside of ourselves and keeping it. And that's why you feel that clenching feeling. 
that pressure or that tightness. It's because you're pushing down on the feeling. So instead of pushing down on it, just welcome it up. Just allow that feeling to arise. Rather than pushing down on it, just allow it to arise. And you could even open up an imaginary window or door right in front of that contraction, that tight feeling, wherever it is. And just see that as energy. And imagine that energy just going out that imaginary window or door. Just imagine it leaving. However you want to imagine it, just watch it leave out that door. And some more. And even more. And some more. And even more. And even more. And just let it go. Just say it as energy. Nothing more than that, nothing to examine. You don't need to know what it is, where it came from, how it got there. And you'll need to know whether it's good or bad or whatever. It's just energy. It's not good or bad, it's just energy. Just let it leave out the door. Just watch it leave. And more. And some more. And even 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 more. And notice how you feel now. Just notice if you feel a little bit lighter, less under stress, under pressure. Notice the difference? And that's all we're looking for, it's just a lighter feeling. And now, we're gonna practice some discrimination. Because discrimination is something that really makes it easy to let go of. Because once you discriminate, all that means is you're seeing things clearly. And you're not seeing things by your automatic programs in your mind. Now, take a look at what's going on in your life. The situation that you think is holding you down. And take a look to see if you're disapproving of it. Now here's what I mean by being on automatic or automatic programs. It's because the natural response would be, yeah, of course I'm disapproving of it. I don't like it. It's not a good situation to have. It's messing up my life and, and, and I could have a whole bunch of other reasons. And that's all well and good. But here's the thing, when we stop and discriminate, now we can take ourselves off of automatic. Because take a look, when you're disapproving of the situation that's going on, is disapproving of it changing anything? Of course not. And by disapproving of what's going on, does that put you in a position where you're motivated to find a real answer and find a solution? Or does it just keep you recreating 
the same problems over and over and over again. And all I have to do is just take a look at your track record of what's been going on. Because chances are, especially if this has been a situation that has been ongoing in your life, you know, maybe it's been going on for years. You, you can look and you see, you've been disapproving of it for years. You've been disapproving of it the whole time. And that has never gotten you a solution, never gotten you an answer. And it always gets you to just keep repeating the same mistakes over and over and over again. Because, look, you're holding the wrong thing in mind. By disapproving of what's going on, you just keep holding in mind what's wrong. Look at it this way. If you take a professional basketball player and they miss a shot, a, a real professional knows how to let go when they miss a shot. They don't hold on to it. They don't beat themselves up. Because if they do, the next time they go to take a shot, guess what's going to happen? They're going to miss that again. But see, the real professionals, they call it playing in the zone. Right? So they just let go of what happened the last moment. And they're just now in this moment. Forget the past. I'm in the now. And that way, the next time they go to take a shot, they're not carrying the burden of the past with them. And it's a new moment. And they have a much higher chance of making that shot the next time around, right? So it's all about what we hold in mind. And if you're beating yourself up and disapproving of the situation, take a look. Just notice you're just holding the problem in your mind. And maybe, just maybe, that's why it's not getting resolved. Just another thing to discriminate about. And one final thing to discriminate about is when you're disapproving of the situation, you don't like it. Does that feel good inside to walk around with that disapproval? You're basically just walking around with unhappiness and deciding to be unhappy. And it's your choice. Now, how smart is that? So then the question becomes obvious. Well, would you rather be negative and hate what's going on? Or would you rather be positive and just love it? And just love it for what it is. That's it. Doesn't mean that you have to agree with it. Doesn't mean that you have to tell yourself some sort of, you know, mind cope nonsense. You know, this isn't copium. It's just deciding, you know what, I'm just going to be positive and love it. Well, for simple reason, because I see I've been hating it, that hasn't done anything. So if that doesn't work, maybe I'll try this instead. Right? So, just get behind that decision. Decide, would you rather be positive and loving, or would you rather decide to be negative? All right, so I'm assuming you're deciding to be loving, deciding to be positive. So take a look at that situation. If you have been disapproving of it, could you let go of that a little bit? Because it's your choice, isn't it? Could you let go disapproving of what's going on in your life? Yes or no? That's all it is. Just a yes or no answer. And could you let go disapproving of it a little bit more? And could you let go disapproving of it a little bit more? And could you let go disapproving of it a little bit more? and even more. And could you let go disapproving of it even more? And even more. And even more. And notice how you feel now. Just notice if you feel a little bit lighter. Again, that's all we're looking for. It's just a lighter feeling. It's showing that we're moving the right direction. Now, in line with letting go disapproving of it, could you also let go of wanting to change what's happening, what's going on? 
because wanting to change it is just another form of disapproving of it. I don't like the way that you are. You need to be different than I like you. Again, that concept that we have of love, right? So could you let go of wanting to change it? And yes or no, it's nothing to figure out. It's not complicated, just decide. Could you let go of wanting to change it? All you need to know is if you're wanting to change it, again, you're holding the wrong thing in mind. And could you let go of wanting to change it a little bit more? And some more. And some more. And even more. And could you let that go even more? And even more. And even more. And even more. And see how you feel now. Again, notice if you feel lighter. And you see, you're unburdening yourself. And this experience of just feeling lighter, hey, not so bad. And this is the experience of not being bothered. Of course, the situation might still be in place, but if you feel lighter and you're not so bothered, what's wrong with that? Would you rather have a situation that isn't working for you and you feel awful about it, or would you rather, if you still had to have that situation not work for you, but you felt nice and light and easy and happy, well, isn't that worth it? You see, with this attitude and doing what we're doing right now, at least you get to play A, I win, B, I win. Either way, I'm just deciding to get positive. And if that's all I get, if I just get nice and light and imperturbable, hey, I win. And if that provides an answer, like so many of these masters, like Gandhi have demonstrated, and I get a brilliant result just from being positive and loving, hey, that's even better, right? So just notice how you feel now. And let's take it a step further. Now, could you just give that thing some love and approval? And again, it doesn't mean that you have to agree with it. It's just a decision. I'm just going to be positive, love it. I'm just going to love it. It's just an attitude. And could you love it a little bit more? And if, I, if you find it hard to love something, then another way you can discriminate about it is like this. Don't do it for it or don't do it for them, but do it for you. Because if you're hating somebody, it's like they say, having a grudge against somebody is like taking poison and waiting for the other person to die. Because if you're hating somebody, you don't like somebody, you're having to walk around with that all the time. Even if you haven't seen them for years, chances are your mind still brings them up every day. Oh, you know that a-hole, blah, 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 right? You have to walk around with that. But if you take the side of love, you just get to walk around with love. So you get to be the beneficiary. So again, don't do it for them, do it for you. So could you love the situation a little bit more? Give it some more approval. And a little bit more. 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 And even more. And even more. And even more. And even more. And notice how you feel now. Now, take a look at that situation in your life. And see how you feel about it now. See if it feels just more possible to find a solution to overcome the challenge.
And it might not even make sense to your mind. It might just be a gut feeling, just an intuition of, yeah, I can find a way. Just notice, notice the difference. And so this is how you can overcome these challenges and make a giant leap forward. This, in my mind, is probably one of the most powerful messages that Lester has ever put across to any of us because it takes away all of our excuses. And there's no choice but to go down the path. There's no rational decision to take other than to be imperturbable about everything. It's the only right thing to do. It only makes sense. So therefore, we can do it. All right, so apply this. And if you want to go deeper into this work, because really what we're doing here is just scratching the surface here on this YouTube channel. If you really want to get good at this and prove that you can become a massive winner in life, then join me on a live course like this upcoming September. I've got a six week health and fitness course called the Body Mastery Course. That's gonna show you how to overcome all your body challenges with love. And it's an amazing thing because the demonstration of love has a massive impact on the body. Like I always say, you don't have to believe what I say, but you could take it for check and prove it to yourself. And this is something that you could definitely prove that when you're loving, it makes a big difference in your body and everything else in your life. So really apply yourself, prove this out for yourself and discover for yourself that all the masters that have come before us, that they're right and that you can do it too.